Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I'm your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today you join me back on my bench of contemplation and those of you who may have watched several of my previous videos will know I often come to this spot when I seek to make a philosophical thought or observation about the world of men's style and perhaps the way that we dress. And today, well, the topic, as you probably saw from the thumbnail, is, is men's style on the rise? Are things changing for the better? Because I think in recent years, we've long been mourning the gradual degradation of men's style. It is true that, um, you know, swiftly and remorselessly, the traditional way that people dress has gone from maybe more formal, perhaps the way I'm dressed now with a blazer, a shirt and a tie, maybe a suit, maybe some other variation of slightly more formal. Uh, but certainly over the last couple of years, we've seen this slide away at an unprecedented pace to, you know, the, the rise of the casual clothing. People now almost certainly dress for comfort rather than style. And this has become the mainstream. Um, you know, it's safe to say that the jogging outfit is now what maybe the suit and tie used to be in the 1950s. It is the perennial outfit of the average male that you will pass in any street. The reasons for that, well, of course, you know, we've just survived a COVID pandemic where everybody's lives were turned upside down. Many people worked from home, so they didn't need to go into the office. They weren't seen by other people in their daily working lives. And as a consequence, they dressed for comfort. They stopped dressing for style. They stopped dressing to make a good impression, to, to create a sense of respect on the people that they meet and even for themselves. Self-respect begins in one's appearance, of course, and this is something which we've definitely uh, seen accelerate away. Now, big business is behind this too. Uh, many of the big mainstream corporations that many thousands of people have worked for over the years and dictated the styles that people dress for work have changed their, their sort of uh, dress codes. Um, big companies, hang on, I can tell you now. In 2016, JP Morgan, one of the biggest sort of corporate entities, indicated that their staff were no longer expected to wear ties. And shortly after that, in 2017, Goldman Sachs followed um, pretty much afterwards. And, you know, for them, they took away their dress code because they wanted to attract this new breed of people, these tech talented people. Uh, and of course, these are folks who don't like wearing formal attire. So gone is that corporate uniformity of the well-dressed man. When we look at some of the more modern entities these days, companies like Facebook and so on, you know, the chief executive officer, multi-billionaire, hugely successful man, Mark Zuckerberg, you know, he's actually famous because he doesn't wear corporate clothing. He tr habitually wears just a t-shirt and, and jeans. Uh, fair enough, if he's casual, he can do what he wants. He's one of the richest men in the world. But of course, as with anything, the tone is set at the top. And I believe in Facebook, um, their corporate sort of dress code only uh, states that clothing you wear to work must not be revealing in nature or must not be politically motivated. That pretty much allows you to do anything that you want. And as we understand, you know, when people uh, are given that sort of, uh, that, that tone is set at the top, it cascades down uh, and people will dress accordingly. Um, there was a time, very, very recently, where retail analysts suggested that the death of the tie was less than 10 years away. The tie would step away from being a mainstream clothing item and become something which was only worn in the most formal of situations. And by comparison, I guess we could say it's something like the bow tie or the cravat. You know, they are rare things that are seen in men's dress today, the bow tie particularly, uh, worn only in very special occasions, black tie or white tie, or by some, you know, very smart or very eccentric individuals. 
Uh, and it horrifies me to think that the Thai, this wonderful opportunity to uh, demonstrate your your character, to articulate your personality in your clothing, would be lost forever uh, and only worn in very special occasions. It wounds me to think that might be the case. But I guess it's something which we should have come to expect because if you look at the sartorial leadership in society, as I say, people like Mark Zuckerberg, what are we exposed to? People who dress down or don't dress very well. In my own country, the United Kingdom, um, we can only look at our our, uh, our leader and our recent, uh, now no longer, but our recently former Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Now Boris Johnson, it is fair to say, is not a man who spent a lot of time standing in front of his wardrobe and deciding what to wear. Um, he came across to me as a man who had dressed hurriedly with little concern for the way he was attired and with little concern for the impression that that made on others. Now for me, when I think of the leader of a nation, a prime minister or a president, I would expect my president or prime minister to be an ambassador for my country, particularly a country which is so closely associated with sartorial elegance as the UK, the home of Savile Row, where men's style, you know, really is point zero. But Boris Johnson, no disrespect to the man, I'm sure he was incredibly intelligent and he you know, discharged his duties as Prime Minister to the best of his ability, but that didn't extend itself very well to his clothing, it is fair to say. And you know, as little time as he spent looking in his wardrobe deciding what to wear, I think he spent even less time staring in a mirror deciding whether or not to brush his hair, uh, because you know, he often looked very dishevelled and I don't know whether he actually cultivated that look with the intention of you know, making it a trademark, his sort of unruly mop of, of blonde hair, but um, it cast a shadow over the way that I looked at him. And when I compare him to other world leaders, you know, like President Biden of, of the United States, President Macron of uh, France, snappy dresses, stylish men, they looked the part. Um, when you look at even past Prime Ministers, the likes of uh, Sir Tony Blair, Gordon Brown, David Cameron, um, they always at least looked smart in their role. And that was something which, you know, when you're looking upwards at the leader of your nation and you see them dressing well, you seek to emulate their look. Uh, and that was very unfortunate that Boris uh, chose not to take a sartorial path. And in fact, not only that, but he kind of endorsed a reduction in the way that civil servants dressed. Uh, for instance, one of his, his special advisor, a man who at the time was quite famous in the UK, a person called Dominic Cummings, uh, would often be seen coming out of number 10 uh, at important sort of meetings, dressed in a fashion which I think most of us would only wear those sort of clothing when we were um, working in the garden or working on the car, you know, really scruffy, uh, utilitarian work clothes. And that's how he dressed to his day job in number 10 Downing Street as a special advisor to the Prime Minister. And I have to say, it did not fill me with confidence to see a man who chose not to dress the part for his job. Um, you know, just saying, he might have been very effective, but that's not the impression that was portrayed. And that's the important thing. When you're in a public facing job, when people first meet you, the only thing they can draw an impression from is appearance. So it's important that you win that first victory in any conversation or in any uh, situation where you're meeting people by looking the part. Now, don't worry, gents, I don't come to the bench of contemplation just to, to mull over doom and gloom. There is a glimmer of light here. Don't forget, the video is called Style on the Rise. And I am very pleased to say that I see some green shoots starting to come through when it comes to an improvement in general men's style. Um, I've always thought for a long time that style is cyclical, all right? I appreciate that people decided to dress for comfort, for casuality. But I fully expected at one point that would reach rock bottom. And when everybody was as casual as they could be, 
there would be a change because people like to stand out from the crowd. They like to step apart from the herd. And I knew that when everybody was wearing jogging bottoms and tracksuits and t-shirts and jeans, that people would then begin to want to look different. And the route they would go, back upwards in the formality stakes, in the style stakes. And I'm very pleased to say that in recent articles I've been reading in the newspapers, they're giving me a little bit of heart. Recently I read an article uh, which quoted statistics from a retail consumer survey. Now John Lewis is uh, probably one of the most beloved and largest department store chains in the United Kingdom and they of course track the sales of items which they sell through their many department stores in this country. And some of those figures are really heartening for us who enjoy men's style. One figure which is pleasing is the fact that the sale of tracksuits is down 50% over the previous year, which is great to see. It shows, I think, that we've probably hit rock bottom when it comes to people wearing the jogging outfits for every uh, sort of element of their lives. Much more pleasing news for me is the fact that the sale of suits has increased 60% over the previous year. Now, of course, an element of that is going to be the bounce back from people who are no longer working from home and they're transitioning back into the workplace and they want to look smart again. They are wearing suits to work again. Also in those consumer figures, it's pleasing to see that uh, the sale of ironing boards has gone up 20%, indicating that people are again improving their look. They want to look sharp. They want to get that crease in their clothing, iron those shirts and look their best, make that all important first impression. And they also want to smell better because the sale of fragrances has increased by 24%, which I am delighted to hear because, you know, not a day goes by when I don't add a fragrance to my ensemble of clothing as an integral part of the olfactory first impression that I make on people I meet for the first time. So lots of these things are very positive. And remember what I said earlier, that retail analysts have suggested that the tie is shortly to become nearly extinct. Well, I've got some news about that too. Within the last couple of weeks, um, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom has changed. Scruffy old Boris Johnson has headed into retirement and new Prime Minister is Liz Truss. And you know what one of her first instructions was when she entered 10 Downing Street and instructions to her civil service, that was that ties are now expected in the workplace. Ties are expected. I, my heart sang when I read that in the Times because I thought to myself it's the beginning of a reversal. If you're expected to wear a tie in the workplace, this will of course cascade through society. When you have meetings with civil servants, if they're offering sort of uh, contracts or grants or have responsibility over an area of business that you work in and you expect to meet somebody whom you know will be wearing a suit and tie, the natural inclination is to dress to that level too. Otherwise, you're going to look scruffy. And I can see that that will cascade through society and simply by Liz Truss, the Prime Minister, saying she would like to see and expect to see civil servants dressed for the part, I expect to see that ripple start to begin in the pond of, uh, of social life and professional life in the UK and hopefully we will see that elsewhere too. So green shoots but a reversal, perhaps an upturn in the cyclical path which is men's sartorial style. And just before I go, you know, some of us have been hanging in for a long time. We've been dressing as best as we can, even though those amongst us, the proletariat, have been dressing to the lowest bottom denominator. There has always been an inspiration and a role model you can look up to. And for me, that inspiration, as traditional and as conservative as it could possibly be, have been the men of the royal family. I'm always delighted 
that they never let us down when it comes to men's style. Now I look to uh, the new Prince of Wales, Prince William, who has always been, you know, he's, a, he's got a great frame for wearing a suit. He's six foot three, he's well built. So, you know, suits are always gonna look good on him. But, you know, Prince William, Prince of Wales, has always dressed the part, and I think he's a very sharp dressing man. Um, now slightly bygone era, but the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip, never disappointed, always with that straightforward pocket square, a well-cut suit, whether it be in tweed or in a business style, he never disappointed. And of course, perhaps the most dapper of the last sort of few generations of royal men, uh, now our beloved King Charles III, Prince, King Charles, and he said Prince Charles then, muscle memory, uh, King Charles, He's a man who has always known the value of dressing well, be it in his traditional sort of um, double-breasted suits or more recently single-breasted suits, never missing up the opportunity to wear the flamboyance of a lovely pocket square and a boutonniere or a lapel badge. Always looks the part, shiny shoes, everything, always, you know, looking pin sharp. Uh, and if you need to look higher, can't look any higher than the king, He's setting the standards, and I am delighted to follow. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this conversation today about, hopefully, the way style is starting to go back up. If you have, give the video a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, click that red button, join me as a subscriber. And if you'd like to support the channel, don't forget you can simply buy me a coffee. And to do that, you'll find the link to my Buy Me A Coffee page in the show notes below. So, until the next time, I leave you now from my bench of contemplation to your own thoughts about men's style. I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, take care.